Welcome everybody to today's Focus on Italy. We're delighted to have with us two eminent producers from Italy. We have Evelina Poggi, who is the CEO at Lynx Multimedia Factory. And we have Christian Yetich, who is from BQ Entertainment um, and Chief Executive there. Welcome both. So one of the reasons today that we really wanted to dig into Italy is that there's been huge changes since we all first met and things have been happening. And there's a real opportunity in Italy for people outside Italy to go in and work with this new emerging talent. Um, Should we start at the beginning and look at where animation is today and what that evolution is that's been happening? Evelina, do you want to, to fill us in? Yes. Um, Well, actually, uh, today Italian animation is going very strong uh, on the international markets. Uh, I would say that uh, we have been recently living a real renaissance. Um, The IPs, uh, the new IPs uh, of animation attract uh, uh, many international uh, co-productions. Uh, and um, I would also say that uh, we would um, we should uh, rewind the tape to the black and white uh, times and uh, to the talented authors uh, from the 60s and 70s um, to have an idea of what we are living today and uh, of uh, the lucky season we are uh, we are living today in animation. So. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about the the talent that was there in the um, in the 60s and 70s and the heritage they left and what's happened to that so that it's uh, evolved into the Italian production scene that there is today? Yes, sure. Well, actually, that period from the 60s and 70s, they were two um, decades uh, of great authorial work. Um, At that time, uh, there was uh, no real uh, industry. Um, There were small businesses. Um, We could could call them uh, um, real uh, craft workshops uh, where um, the works of art, uh, such like um, commercials, uh, used to become uh, real masterpieces. Uh, I can mention uh, some uh, uh, of those authors like uh, Bruno Bozzetto, Emanuele Luzzatti, the Pagot Brothers, uh, Pierluigi De Masso, Osvaldo Cavandoli. They are only some of the many names of uh, authors uh, that used to work at that time, um, making uh, commercials, but also movies uh, and animated shorts. And some of them uh, are uh, active today as well. Uh, The work they did uh, was a huge one. And uh, about the heritage, uh, I can say uh, what we got from them uh, um, is the quality of creativity, uh, the originality uh, of the ideas, uh, but also um, I can notice that uh, um, uh, each program uh, we are producing um, is full of uh, culture, values, uh, tradition, uh, typical uh, uh, of Italy, and uh, that we are spreading all over the world uh, those values. Um, Then those uh, workshops uh, gradually turned uh, into uh, real small businesses uh, and then animation studios. Uh, but the evolution, uh, the real evolution uh, happened, occurred um, more recently, I would say um, during the last uh, five years. Uh, thanks uh, both to the perseverance uh, of uh, the Italian producers, but also to the uh, recent new financial incentives that were tuned up by the Ministry of Culture. And uh, thanks to uh, those um, uh, things, uh, to to the law uh, that was uh, um, set up recently, animation uh, is actually uh, going very strong today. So we've now got the the foundations. Christian, do you want to just take us through what's been happening over the last five years and those advantages for people outside Italy? 
Yeah, th those latest five years have been a long journey, uh, but in this journey, an increasing attention to the animation industry has uh, led us to a great production ferment. We are talking about the past five years. Uh, starting from uh, 2017, the cinema and audiovisual law affected the sector by allocating dedicated funds and opening public calls uh, for grant money, both nationally and locally. The new law has produced a beneficial effect on the sector, expanding the financial, the financial resources. First of all, the tax credit, applicable to all the international co-production, in particular, was brought up to 40 for 0 percent. And then the selective subsidies were allocated to support. For example, the screenwriting uh, project selected, selected uh, can get up to 20,000 uh, euros. The development and pre-production uh, can lead up to 100,000 euros uh, per title. And the production, uh, each production, each title can get up, uh, up to 1 million euro. The new law also includes uh, automatic subsidies, which for animation project can get up uh, uh, to uh, up to 4 million euros per project. Depending, depending, depending on how many territories uh, the, the show uh, will, is distributed. So there's a, there's a real opportunity to come in and work with producers who are being backed. So did these reforms you know, really change the production growth? You know, can you see things changing? Huh. Indeed, Sarah, a lot. Uh, like uh, Evelina said before, we are living a new renaissance for animation industry. It was a really, really important uh, intervention that is currently strengthening the sector. Production companies are now much more attractive internationally, and at the same time, uh, we are we feel more confident into investments. The ministry's funds uh, allowed that that growth. Employees, for example, have been in 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 some cases uh, even doubled, and uh, uh, new businesses are entering the market. Some of the studio have strength strength the production structures, realizing entire, entire programs on, it, on Italy, Italian territory. I mean, it, it's amazing. I, I wish everybody had such um, a forward-thinking governments. Evelina, in numbers, what's the current situation? What, how, are, how is Italy looking? Because people in the UK love their numbers. Tell, tell us what the numbers are. <laughs> Uh, well, in Italy, um, the animation industry is um, is made uh, is made up of more than eighty uh, companies, I would say, and uh, half of them uh, are uh, production studios, uh, and the half and the other half uh, service providers, more or less, more or less. Um, over than um, uh, six thousand employees uh, work uh, in Italy. And uh, um, we have a turnover uh, in euros of more than 180 million. Uh, but the, the industry is growing and growing. So uh, these numbers uh, I can, I can uh, um, uh, witness uh, uh, these numbers uh, I, I said, but uh, um, they, they are growing, uh, they're growing fast. Um, the sector uh, of animation as regards the kids world, uh, but also uh, for cinema and television, um, has a value of about four and a half million euros. Um, so going back to uh, the, the handicraft uh, uh, structure I mentioned before, that was uh, typical of uh, the context uh, uh, of the 60s and 70s, uh, I would say that those authors strove uh, an industry based uh, on creativity and uh, on a product uh, quality. 
And so now uh, we are actually distributing all over the world uh, um, um, programs that are full of, uh, that are expressions uh, of the Italian creativity. So we, we've mentioned the government, but um, how did the associations, what was the role and how did that um, change things? Yes. Uh, well, you know that Cartoon Italia, uh, which is the Italian uh, uh, National uh, uh, Association of uh, Animation Producers, um, it has got an important role uh, in this change, in this recent change, because uh, um, Cartoon Italia brought uh, a very concrete contribution uh, to the law, the law mentioned by uh, Christian before. Um, it took part, Cartoon, Cartoon Italia took part uh, to the institutional tables and also provided specific guidelines for the decrees, but also for the calls for proposals that, was aimed, that were aimed at animation. And um, on the other hand, so this is on the national uh, aspect. Uh, on the local aspect, uh, Cartoon Italia was very active in consolidating uh, the local industry uh, because, you know, um, the uh, Italian studios uh, are equally distributed all over the country and uh, uh, they have uh, specific features according to the regions that they belong to. So Cartoon Italia uh, has fostered um, the creation of uh, real local hubs. Um, this way, encouraging the economic, creative, and also technological growth of all the businesses and of the local uh, institutions that are connected to the industry of animation, of course, but also to the industry of video games and digital pictures. So I would say um, the association tried to involve uh, all the supply chain uh, of the audiovisual sector. Following uh, this, uh, this trend, uh, Cartoon Italia promoted uh, deals uh, with uh, some of the most important regions in Italy, like uh, Piedmont, uh, Sardinia, the Marche, uh, and some important contracts uh, um, have been recently closed with those, uh, uh, those regions. And uh, also, um, we are also uh, discussing a possible uh, new, uh, uh, new agreements with other institutions like uh, uh, Tuscany, like uh, Camp Campania, and also Lombardy. Uh, so we are active in uh, both sides, um, either on the national and uh, uh, the local one. So I'm going to ask, um, you know, ask Christian more about the regions and how that works, particularly from a, an outside perspective. You know, what, what is happening in the regions and what should people be aware of? Yes. Uh, also, Cartoon Italia is very active on the internationalization uh, side, but working with the local also, like, like you said. The first concrete goal has been uh, the hosting of Cartoon Digital uh, in Cagliari, in Sardinia. Uh, that is a top level international event of the animation and digital entertainment industry led by Cartoon Media. The first edition was uh, in 2019 and uh, as, as born from the collaboration of Cartoon Media with the Sardinia Film Commission, uh, and it reached a, a record of uh, attendance and uh, acquired a great appreciation at, at international level. Actually, it was an unforgettable uh, event. Um, from Cartoon Digital, and, in, and within Cartoon Digital, we've also organized the Animation Italian Days, um, the, the project New Animation in Sardinia, NAS, have born, and is a training pro, uh, program which has trained about uh, 80, 90 animators already so far. What we're hearing from the perspective of somebody outside is there's a huge amount happening and there's lots of opportunity. In a minute, we'll get to go back into the benefits for somebody outside. Okay. But first of all, which formats are the most popular on, in the international markets? You know, do you want to just give us an outline? 
Yeah, uh, I'll try because there are many. Of course, TV series are the best sellings on international markets and the most attractive format for co-production, as, as we know. Um, they take birth from original ideas or book adaptation, both. Uh, I could mention, uh, for example, Nefertina by Grafilm, Yo-Yo by Sholab or Path the Dog by Animoca. All of them uh, resulting from solid co-production with foreign uh, partners. Um, many other programs have been sold. Over 150 countries like uh, the very well-known Geronimo Stilton, Calimero, 44 Cats, Tip the Mouse and so on. There are, there are many. But apart from the TV series, uh, the public broadcaster, Rai, usually uh, produce and, and, and more now TV special based on educational and cultural and sensitive themes for children which are distributed all over the world. Just uh, to, to mention a few of them, The Star of Andra and Tati by La Cadarte Studio, Lorenzo and the Mirror by VQ Entertainment, The Case by Grafilm that have achieved an incredible number of uh, awards recently, those, these are uh, some of the best examples. Uh, last but not least, Italian animation aimed to the relaunch of animation, animation feature films. After Cinderella the Cat from Mad Entertainment from Naples, a success with a selection that was selected for the Academy Awards in 2018, and uh, Lorenzo Mattotti's last uh, feature film, The Bear's Famous Invasion of Sicily, a French-Italian co-production. Other Italian brave producers are currently working on animated uh, feature films. So the crux of that is we've got feature, feature films coming through on the international marketplace, as well as series that are, are growing. So that, that heritage of working on the global stage is there. Um, Evelina, I just want to ask you a bit more about the broadcasters, because from the international perspective, working with a producer and being able to have a local broadcaster at that inception point of a, of a co-production is really valuable. Do you want to talk to us about the um, broadcasters and how they work? Yes. Until recently, uh, I must say that here on the national territory, uh, the producers uh, could have relied only on the public broadcaster uh, rise investments, uh, which are about uh, 30 million uh, in two years. But uh, the new wave on, of animation, of Italian animation, is changing uh, the landscape of the sector. Uh, in fact, uh, we have another great opportunity offered by the recent decree issued at the end of 2021 on the programming and investment obligations from the linear and non-linear audiovisual services providers. Um, we, we would have the opportunity uh, to work with the private networks uh, and uh, um, this opportunity will give a new impetus to the industry, which will be able to widen the production base and strengthen the sector, but uh, also uh, in terms of uh, diversity of contents, editorial lines, techniques and technologies, because, you know, you deal with a different, uh, with a different um, um, client to uh, a different co-producer. Um, and and, uh, um, and uh, the, the goals, uh, uh, the, the content uh, are actually uh, different according to the channels, according to uh, the politics, uh, the, the policy of, uh, of the broadcasters. Um, today, uh, the public broadcaster um, has to invest uh, uh, about 17% uh, of uh, uh, its net revenues per year. Uh, whereas the private broadcaster uh, should invest a 12 uh, and a half uh, percent of uh, the net revenues, uh, whereas, uh, whereas the OTT over the top uh, um, should invest uh, the 20 percent of net uh, revenues. Uh, this uh, was in um, uh, decided in 2022. 
So we've looked at both those foundations, the huge growth, the possibility of working together. So let's look to the future now and let's look at the benefits of the opportunities and collaboration from outside. What, what are, where, where are we on that? Um, why Italy and why should producers or script writers, musicians, other people in the industry choose Italy and why should they come to Italy to collaborate? Well, apart uh, from uh, the fact that Italy is a beautiful land uh, with beautiful cities, uh, which are ready to welcome uh, producers and professionals, uh, um, I also would say that uh, um, our association is uh, um, uh, open to uh, exchanges uh, with the foreign associations, so foreign uh, uh, businesses. Um, but um, I would say that uh, uh, the, the benefits we have uh, had uh, recently from uh, the new uh, reform could be uh, an excellent opportunity to, uh, to set up a new uh, co-productions. Um, in fact, uh, the Italian, uh, Italian animation industry um, has always um, been based on co-production, on the model of co-production, uh, with a share of the foreign partners uh, foreign partner up to 25 uh, to 30 percent of the production budget and now uh, this uh, trend could increase could uh, yes could uh, could increase um, indeed thanks uh, to the uh, tax incentives uh, um, uh, new fund, uh, funds and uh, selective sub subsidies automatic subsidies mentioned uh, by Christian um, I think uh, the Foreign uh, uh, foreign producers uh, can can find uh, a lot of business uh, benefits uh, working uh, with Italian uh, Italian animators. Yes, because the the thing is that uh, why why we have to we we would say that because uh, what we seen and this is a sensitive themes for for uh, UK producers uh, the thing that we are now joining. Uh, our efforts with uh, the other 27 European countries uh, in order to be able to achieve more, you know, uh, things from the U uh, com European community, it's also very important. Is the reason actually why we have adopted uh, in this huge way the, uh, the European directive? Because uh, only France and, uh, and Italy adopted uh, uh, the AVSM uh, directive uh, in such a big way, like 20%, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I know because I, I'm fresh uh, from uh, the European um, Animation Association uh, meeting at MIFA, and every country reported where they are with the adoption of uh, the directive, and actually only France and Italy, we are a little bit ahead. You mentioned the numbers and the advantages for the Italians. How does that work? How much has to be in Italy and how well, much can question. be outside Italy? Yeah. Yes, good question, Sarah, because this is a very relevant point because out of uh, that uh, uh, numbers that Evelina said, that the percentage 20%, 12 17%, 50% have to be Italian production and 50% could be European production. I, I hesitate to mention the B word, the Brexit word, but we have to get it out there. Since the parting of, of the ways, um, things have shifted and changed and having that opportunity to come and work with Italy is huge for us. Christian, do you just want to give us a short outline? I know there's a lot to talk about here, but a short line on the benefits of being able to co-produce yeah. not only with Europe, but with Italy. Yeah, in a nutshell, Sara, like uh, Evelina was correctly in saying, the relationship opened by Cartoon Italia with European businesses and associations uh, give also the chance to organize exchanges that we really would like to have. And uh, for example, thanks to Anika, Anika is the National Association of Film Industry and ITA, ITA is the Italian trade agency uh, support. The association has encouraged international entrepreneurs missions, which have increased 
the trend towards co-production. Uh, at European level, Cartoon Italia, together with the other European representative, um, also uh, being among the, found the founders of uh, animation in Europe, that is a new association aiming at fixing the industrial development plans at commu uh, community level. And consider that now the, the members of uh, animation in Europe, uh, we are 27 European countries. Thank you very much. I think the, the case for coming and exploring is, is great. And um, Evelina, just before we go, where, where do we go for more information? They can get in touch with, uh, with Cartoon Italia, just having a look at our website, uh, which is uh, www.cartoonitalia.it. And they can find uh, all the uh, producers uh, associated to, to Cartoon Italia, and they can have an idea of uh, what they will find uh, and the opportunities uh, to co-produce with us. So thank you both so much for your time. I know what a busy period it is, and particularly with so much happening in Italy. Fantastic stuff. I think we're going to leave with a showreel of all, I think it's 47 countries, uh, companies that you're working with at the moment, and examples of all the depth and breadth of work they have. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. One day, everything changed. We had to move. Let's get to work.